people want to buy. Now, speaking of Apple, I talked about uh, uh, the close relationship with the Caterpillar in China. Apple also has a real close relationship to China. And on that note, I want to bring in our guest, uh, Gordon Chang. Uh, Gordon's with us. And Gordon, uh, you know, I know that Apple, I mean, uh, smartwatch sales sort of plateaued in the last quarter in China, and that helped hurt Apple. But in that plateauing, Apple actually took more market share. Is it possible that you can have a sort of sideways smartphone market in China and Apple continue to gobble up share, which kind of neutralizes that? Yeah, I don't really think so, Charles. And the reason is that Huawei, which is nominally a private company, but is probably controlled by the People's Liberation Army, which means it's a Beijing favorite, has really come out with its new wearable, its new watch. And it's also come out with a new phone. So I think that essentially Apple is going to have real problems in China, largely because of, of Huawei and, and local competition, but also because the local economy is just not that good. You know, we saw that with the disastrous import number just a couple hours ago. Down 13.8 percent. Down 13.8 percent in dollar terms, but they rigged the dollar rate, the Ministry of Commerce, so it's probably down even more in dollar terms. This is a real problem for China. You know, consumption may be increasing a little bit, but in an absolute amount, but it's not really going very strong. What's more important there right now? Because we know that we've heard over the last, uh, I guess, half a decade or so that they've wanted the consumer market to, to sort of set the pace. They want an American style where two thirds of your economy is the consumer. Is it, that still more important than the exports? Yeah, look, they say a lot of things that they want, but they're not actually undertaking the structural reforms that will get them to a consumption-based economy. And that's really the issue there, especially in, the, in a declining growth rate, which may actually be down to zero, maybe one or two, certainly not the seven that they claim. They're finding it very hard to implement any reforms these days. And many of the things they're doing are actually going back to this Maoist semi-command model, like, for instance, the reintegration of large state enterprises prices back into formal monopolies. This is not a good story for the Chinese economy. But by the same token, uh, I keep reading where they're suggesting or they're hinting, hey, banks, we want you to do this, but they're not coming down with this iron fist. You know, like in other words, they may have Chinese, uh, you know, competitors to Apple, but it feels like the Chinese consumer wants the product. That's the best product that they can afford it. Uh, it feels like banks haven't followed completely what Beijing's orders have been. Right. Is there some form of liberalization going on that they just can't turn around at this point? Well, I think long term, if you look over the course of decades, that's certainly right. The Chinese people are not going to go back to Mao's economy. But nonetheless, when you look at what they've been doing over the last two or three years, on balance, they've been moving backwards on the important things. And consumption is really in trouble right now because you can see that from car sales. And you're going to start to see it in other sectors as well. All right. All right. Hold there right there, Gordon Chang. Thanks a lot.